Greetings and welcome to Temple Baptist Church in Poplar Bluff, Missouri. Thanks for joining us today. We've been traveling through the pages of the book of Proverbs. We've been talking about wisdom, not the wisdom that we can gain from the things of the world, but we've been talking about the wisdom that comes only from God. We're talking about true wisdom. We're talking about real wisdom. We're talking about the wisdom whose consequences are good rather than the wisdom and the knowledge of this world the consequences of which are negative, they're, they're hurtful. We don't want to live in the midst of those consequences. And so we've talked about the pursuit of wisdom. We've talked about the true source of wisdom, and that, of course, being God. We've talked about that which competes against godly wisdom, and that is our self, our selfishness, our greed. We've talked about the call of wisdom. There's no excuse for us not living in the true godly wisdom that will cause us to be more than conquerors, to be victorious because God so freely gives it. It's right here in His Word. And so we ought to look at that. We've talked about the negative consequences of rejecting God's wisdom. And today I want us to talk about the blessing of accepting God's wisdom. We just got finished last time talking about all the negatives uh, associated with saying no to God's wisdom and living in our own wisdom, living in our own strength and our own power. Or maybe we have consulted some earthly person with some earthly philosophy, and it's not in, um, in line with the things that we've learned of God's Word, uh, the true wisdom. And so listen to what it says in the last verse of the first chapter of the book of Proverbs. Whoever listens to me, God says, will dwell safely and will be secure without fear of evil. One theologian wrote these words, and I quote, As a wicked man's mind is often full of anxiety in the midst of all his outward prosperity and glory, so the mind of a good man is filled with peace, and joy, even when his outward man is exposed to many troubles. Let me kind of break that down for us for a moment. A wicked man, a man who is living for himself, for his own pleasure, for his own idea of what happiness is. By the way, a wicked man will pursue for a lifetime and even eternity and never find the good, the happy that he's looking for. And so in this man's mind, as he's chasing the things of the world, his mind is always filled with anxiety. Will I find the good today? Will I find this good that seems to be so elusive, so um, running away from me? Will I have it tomorrow? Will I have it the next day? When all of these earthly possessions that his knowledge has a mass for himself, are no more, where does the joy and peace come from then? And so there's an, an ever-living uh, anxiety of, I understand the fact that when I'm living in my own philosophy, my own way, doing life my way instead of God's way, it, it's not a lasting happiness. And so a wicked man's mind is often full of anxiety, but a, a man who is of good is filled with peace and joy. Are you filled with anxiety today, trying to figure out the difficulties in your life on your own, trying to solve your own problems? God never created you to be smart enough, to be powerful enough to solve your own problems. That's His desire in your life. He wants to solve your problems. He wants to be the source of joy and peace in your life. But in order to gain that joy and that peace, we must turn away from our own ideas, from our own knowledge, from our own wisdom, and we must accept the wisdom of God. We must empty ourselves and say, Lord, we don't have all that we need. We don't know all that we need to know, but God, we trust, we know that you do. And so, Lord, we trust our lives with you. Even when things are negative around us, we can still have a joy and a peace that comes 
from having faith and trust that God knows where we are and what we need. Whoever listens to me will dwell safely and will be secure without fear of evil. That's what I want. I think that's what any person who truly admits their greatest desires in life should want, that we would dwell in safety and that we would have no fear of the evil, difficult things around us. Folks, these are the blessings of accepting God's wisdom. And we can have these things only if we accept God's way and God's wisdom for our life. We will be secure in the midst of all the chaos around us. We will be secure without fear of evil. What's the worst thing that evil can do to us? We may think that the worst thing evil can do to us is to rob us of our lives. I would share with you that if we have followed the wisdom of God, if we trust in God, death ain't no big deal. We know where we're going for those of us who are followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, who have followed after the direction of His Word and His way for our lives. And if we think life here is good, we've seen nothing yet compared to what life is going to be like in heaven. And God's way, well, Jesus says it, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. God loves us so much that He gave Jesus, and He died on the cross to pay for our sins. He who was sinless, never made a mistake, never sinned, walked a perfect life upon this earth, and He gave His life so that we could take what He paid and apply it to our lives. How much love that is, we will never fully realize until we get to heaven one of these days. We will be secure, and we will have no fear of the evil that is all around us. I remember sitting on the screened-in front porch of my grandparents' home. It was a farm home, and there were some little spaces maybe between the doors from the outside and maybe even a few holes, some of which maybe I helped create. And some of the screens on that front porch, there was a swing, a porch swing there, and I spent hours in the summertime on that front porch watching the traffic uh, go by, watching the tractor trailers go by. And I'll never forget, I would, as a, as a little boy, I would get a little bit upset, a little bit ill at ease when I would see what I thought was a wasp because I knew they stung. My grandmother's philosophy was this. When she recognized that it wasn't a wasp, but a dirt dauber. Now, I've looked it up later, and I find out that female dirt daubers do have stingers, but they are not nearly as upset around people as wasps are who the females also have stingers. And you don't have to do a whole lot of being around a wasp before it doesn't like your company and it will sting you. But a dirt dauber would just rather get away from you instead of stinging you. Now my grandmother's words, and I believe she believed what she was telling me, a dirt dauber doesn't have a stinger, she would say. You don't have to be afraid of the dirt dauber, just be watchful of the wasps. And so sometimes she had to tell me which one was a dirt dauber and which one was a wasp. Oh, settle down. Don't worry. Don't be afraid. It's just a dirt dauber. If we know Jesus, if we are living in the wisdom of Jesus, if we are living in the way of God, which is prescribed right here in His Word, we can know what God wants for us by getting in His Word every day and becoming familiar with it. We will have no fear of what is evil around us. Don't have to be afraid because if you belong to Jesus, there's no longer any sting left in death. It is merely the vehicle by which we make our way to a place that is going to be better than we can ever imagine, a perfect place where we'll have no sickness, no sorrow, and no death. And so, brothers and sisters, whoever listens to the Lord will dwell safely and we will be secure with no fear of what is to come. 
because God, through Jesus, has taken the stinger out of death. May we live in the joy and the peace that only God, through Jesus, can give us. Father, I pray that you would use your word today to draw people to yourself, to draw people to your son Jesus, to the, the, the message, the good news of the gospel, that he paid our sin debt, and what we need to do is believe that and accept it for our own lives and to be obedient to the things of God. And then we don't have to be scared of any stingers because they've been removed from our lives by your love and by your grace. I pray you would encourage someone with your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you today. I pray that you'll live today in the peace and in the love of God.